Hello, and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is true and applicable to our lives today. If you'd like to learn more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Sometimes 119 receives questions about the tallit and the kippah. Why are these items used? Is it scriptural to wear them? And should we be wearing them if we want to obey God? In this teaching, we will address these questions concerning the tallit and the kippah. Let's start with the tallit. The tallit is a four-cornered cloth that has tassels, called tzitzit, tied onto its corners. There are two forms of the tallit. One is the tallit gadol, or large tallit, which Jews cover themselves with when they pray at synagogue. The other form is the tallit katan, or small tallit, which Jews wear underneath their regular clothes during the day. The purpose of the tallit is to fulfill the command to wear tzitzit, which is found in Numbers chapter 15. Numbers 15, verses 37 through 40. Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel and tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and to put a cord of blue on the tassel of each corner. And it shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of Yahweh, to do them, not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes, which you are inclined to whore after. So you shall remember and do all my commandments, and be holy to your God." When this command was given, it was not unusual to have clothing with tassels or fringes on the corners. Many ancient cultures, from the Egyptians to the Assyrians to the Greeks, wore clothing with corners that were decorated with fringes or tassels. It was a fairly simple matter to add a cord of blue to these clothes in order to obey God's command from Numbers 15. However, later, when clothing styles changed and fringed and four-cornered garments were not as common, Jews started using the tallit as a way to keep the command to wear tzitzit. Here at 119, we do believe that we should keep the command to wear tzitzit. To learn more about the tzitzit, see our teachings, Berean Bridges, tzitzits, Should Women Wear Tzitzits, Tzitzit FAQs, and Parasha Points Shalach. The traditional Jewish method of keeping this command, by wearing the tallit katan with tzitzit attached, is a fine way of keeping it. There are two things, however, that we wish to point out. First, the scriptures do not command us to wear the tallit itself. They do command us to wear the tzitzit, the tassels with the blue thread. Numbers 15, verse 38, says to attach the tzitzit to a garment. The Hebrew word translated as garment is not tallit, but it is beged, which can be any article of clothing. In fact, the word tallit is never used anywhere in the Hebrew scriptures. So tzitzit can be attached to one's shirt, pants, coat, or another piece of clothing. We don't think it's necessary to use a tallit. The second thing to note is that in many Jewish synagogues, they do not permit Gentiles to wear a tallit. In one of their rulings, the Central Council of American Rabbis declared this, For a Gentile to don a tallit at a public worship service, something he or she need not do in order to take part in that event, is to identify physically as one of us. He or she should not wear a tallit at our synagogue services. So if you're not Jewish and do decide to wear a tallit, you should be aware of the Jewish standards concerning the tallit if you ever attend a synagogue. The Kippah the kippah is a small, circular hat that Jewish boys and men wear on their heads. The reason that the kippah is worn is to remind these men that God is above them. The Talmud states, Cover your head so that the fear of heaven will be upon you, and pray for divine mercy. There's no command in the Torah to wear a kippah. The priests, the sons of Aaron, were commanded to wear turbans, but the common people were not commanded to wear turbans or any other kind of headwear. Jewish teaching admits that the kippah is not part of the Torah and that it originated as an optional tradition. As Baruch Davidson of Chabad.org explains, the tradition to wear a kippah is not derived from any biblical passage. 
Rather, it is a custom which evolved as a sign of our recognition that there is someone above us who watches our every act. In Talmudic times, the practice of wearing a head covering was reserved for men of great stature. In later generations, though, it became the accepted custom for all Jewish men to wear a kippah at all times, and especially during prayer. As with all Jewish customs, once they become a universally accepted Jewish practice, they become halachically obligatory. Jay Stein, a conservative rabbi, corroborates this view. He said, In Talmudic times, it was not a widespread practice to cover one's head. Covering one's head was an act of extreme piety, not a norm for everyone. There is additional evidence that indicates that the kippah was not worn until later in Jewish history. The Talmud itself refers to covering the head as a custom, not as something commanded by Scripture. Also, among the limited pieces of historical art that depict ancient Israelites, none of them show a man wearing a kippah. The men's heads are depicted either uncovered or wearing other hats that were common at the time. Another thing to note is that the scriptural symbology for covering the head is different from the symbology behind the kippah. The kippah is worn as a reminder of a man's devotion to God. But in the scriptures, covering the head is something that a man does when he is ashamed or in distress, and possibly something that a woman does to show that she is under her husband's authority. So the symbology that justifies the kippah does not seem to come from the scriptures. Now, to be clear, we don't think it's shameful or wrong to wear a kippah. Sometimes people point out that Paul instructs men not to cover their heads in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 4. However, Paul is not referring to the kippah in this passage. So far as we can tell, the kippah didn't even exist at the time 1 Corinthians was written. For more on this and on the general biblical symbology of covering the head, we recommend our teaching, Head Coverings, in 1 Corinthians 11. We also want to be very clear that the kippah is not commanded. It is not required by the Torah or by any of the scriptures. In fact, it's not mentioned in them at all. There's one other thing to note. Unlike the tallit, the kippah is considered acceptable for a Gentile to wear in a synagogue. In fact, in many cases, the synagogue actually requires Gentiles to wear it while they're inside. So in the synagogue, for a Gentile to wear a tallit is often considered disrespectful, but for him to wear a kippah is considered respectful and proper. To recap, the Bible commands that people should wear tzitzit, fringes with a blue thread, in order to remember God's commandments. The traditional Jewish way of wearing tzitzit is to wear a tallit with tzitzit attached. However, this tradition developed much later. It's one way, but not the only way, of wearing tzitzit. Concerning the kippah, there's no biblical command to wear it, or to otherwise cover one's head. Wearing the tallit and kippah are Jewish traditions, not commandments from God. We pray that you've been blessed by this teaching. Remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.